The future of web design doesn't belong to people who just know how to use tools. It belongs to the creatives who think bigger, move faster, and establish their own identity. My name is Matt Jumper. I've been designing and building websites for years now, and everything is shifting fast. I didn't start as the most technical person. I'm just obsessed with figuring things out and exploring new paths. And right now, the people who can do that are the ones who are going to win. It's the ones that can wear many hats and move quickly. So let's talk about why. AI, no-code tools, and a flood of new apps are lowering the barrier of entry in every creative field. It's getting easier and faster to make things across design, development, images, video, you name it. And because of this, we're seeing the internet flooded with beautiful, fun, and new innovative sites, which is amazing. But at the same time, it's also getting bloated with average, repetitive, and just kind of cookie cutter sites. Being able to both design and build a site used to make you special, but those days are gone. The industry is being reshaped. Everyone always says the people who win are the ones who adapt, but what does that look like in web design? especially when everybody seems to be adapting in the same way. What roles are actually future-proof? How do you stand out? And what tools will help you stay ahead? So every creative area now has a tool or 10 or 20 that lets solo creators move fast in areas that they previously had no interest being in because the barrier was so high. But let's take a look at the current landscape for creative tools inside of the web design world. Now, the industry, as I said, it's moving fast. So this list might be outdated by the time you watch it, but here's what I have right now. So for developing sites without writing any code, we have Framer, Webflow, and soon to be Figma sites. I'm excited to see what comes from there. For writing custom code with AI, we have Cursor, Copilot, and Windsurf. For generating images and video with AI, we have Midjourney, Visual Electric, Runway, and Kling AI, and dozens of others. We have Spline for 3D, Rai for animation, Jitter for video, and of course, ChatGPT and Claude for strategy, copy, and planning. It's an exciting time to be able to build and use all these tools, but how do you actually use them to stand out? And that's the new challenge. So what's the answer? In my opinion, it's about putting out quality work and actually being recognizable and known for something specific. You wanna be the person that people think of when they ask who's great at bold, colorful, typography heavy sites or who builds killer e-com sites inside a framer or who's that one person that was creating crazy mid-journey art and then animating it with Rive inside a Webflow. That's what standing out actually looks like now. You find a lane or better yet, you make it and define it and you get known for it. So that lane could be a signature style that you have that works across different industries. It could be a specific industry that you're specialized in while flexing your ability to make different styles within it. Could be a creative toolkit, combining outputs from different platforms and a unique superpower. It doesn't matter how you build your niche. It matters that you build with intent and showing up in a way that's hard to forget. And yeah, I know this is gonna get said a lot, but it's true, you've gotta develop your taste. You can literally create anything now, and that's the one thing that really separates one from another. So being well-rounded, by the way, doesn't mean being average at everything. It doesn't mean you're a jack of all trades, master of none. It means you're great at a few things that can work together and be packaged into something valuable. So right now, Framer is the tool that actually best supports this shift for me, because it's where generalists can win, because they can anchor their service in this development and then stack things on top of it and you can layer on whatever creative strength that you bring. Framer requires just enough technical know-how to build fully customizable, responsive sites from scratch without needing to go super deep into web development. It sits in that sweet spot, not too simple like Squarespace or Wix, not too dev heavy like Webflow, just fast, flexible, and made for creative minds. And just to be clear, I'm not saying don't learn how to code. That's still fundamental to being a great web designer. And I'm not saying don't use Webflow, you should absolutely use it if it's the right tool for you and for the job. But the point is this, the creatives who win from here on out won't be the ones who master a single tool. They'll be the ones with taste, with speed, with strategy, with intent. They'll use whatever tools available to them to ship ideas fast and to experiment often and to stand out with original work.